Um, but first off, thanks everyone for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon. Um, we're really excited to talk about the new Fivetran provider that we've written with in collaboration with the Fivetran team. Um, we are gonna do a longer version of this, uh, of this topic a little bit down the road while we're adding a few more features. But I think for right now, I'm really excited to show you how it'll help your existing Fivetran workloads and how you can simplify them a little bit. Um, a couple of notes. Um, first off, please feel free to ask questions. You know, we'll get to them as, uh, as frequently as we can. Um, the content and the video and everything will be sent over to your inbox afterwards. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, and third off, if you do end up trying this provider out and you run into issues or you, need, you want additional features, please feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help out. Um, you know, with that said, I'd like to introduce Kenton, who is our lead developer advocate here. Uh, to walk us through how to use the new Fivetran provider. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Baraj. Um, so thanks everybody for joining. Like Baraj said, um, this is gonna be a short session. So our live with astronomers are always um, short, like 10 to 15 minutes and very developer focused. So we're gonna spend most of our time just in the DAG code today. And this is just gonna be kind of a teaser of this new Fivetran provider to give you a sense of um, and how you can implement it and how it's going to change. And like I said, we'll um, go through kind of more details at a future date. Um, but basically the new, so we keep saying new five tran provider because there was a five tran provider for Airflow before, which provided um, operators and sensors and hooks uh, to interact with Fivetran from Airflow. So if you're not familiar, um, Fivetran's obviously a super common um, ETL, ELT tool. Um, Airflow pairs with it really well, um, kind of as the orchestrator, especially if you have workflows that are, uh, you know, doing something after the Fivetran step or sometimes before. So we see Fivetran and DBT a lot here, um, things like that. So uh, super nice pairing with Airflow. And then uh, part of the reason that this provider was revamped and is going through this update is to bring in some of the newer uh, Airflow features that are just going to make it easier to write your DAGs that interact with Fivetran and give you um, kind of a lot more uh, flexibility and visibility into what's happening. So the new Fivetran provider is going to contain asynchronous operators um, to submit and monitor your Fivetran sync jobs um, and is also going to have a built-in open lineage integration. So those are the two things that I'm going to uh, focus on today. So with that, I'm actually going to hop over to my code here and go through an example DAG, sort of what uh, it means to implement these features. So first I'm going to start with what I'm calling the original one. So this is what your DAG might have looked like with the older um, existing, pre-existing Fivetran provider. And this DAG is pretty straightforward. Basically what it's doing is just uh, submitting a Fivetran job um, to load some extracts into Fivetran. In this particular example, this data then goes um, on to be part of DBT jobs downstream, so that will become relevant again in a minute. Um, but what we have up here is uh, just kind of the general Fivetran information. So we're going to provide a couple of different connectors here that we loop through. So we're creating multiple tasks uh, to import this data. You notice at the top, I'm just importing these um, Fivetran operator and sensor. And then down here where I define my tasks, I have, again, I'm looping through those different connector IDs so that we have a copy of these tasks, this task for each sync job. Um, the actual operator is straightforward. I provide it with my connection ID to Fivetran, um, the connector that I'm running through here. Um, so that's going to tell me uh, what the job is in Fivetran um, and then how I'm scheduling it. In this DAG with the original Fivetran operator, what would happen uh, when you ran this task is this, uh, the job would be sent off to Fivetran and then the task would be marked as successful, assuming Fivetran actually received um, that API request. So this is a pattern uh, sometimes referred to as fire and forget, meaning um, just like if you were to make an API call with like the HTTP operator, all the Airflow operator does is send the request and get a successful, you know, um, response back. So it waits for a 200 or something from the API to say the API has received this. But with Fivetran, where what you're doing is, you know, loading or transforming data compared to when 
ELT job, those jobs often take some time, especially if your data is pretty big. And this operator didn't account for that. So it would be marked as successful from the airflow side uh, right after that request was sent. That's why in this DAG, we have a sensor, which comes downstream of the operator, to wait for that job to finish. And the reason this was needed in a lot of workflows is if you're going to have a task downstream of this job, either in this DAG or in a different DAG, um, you know, using a data set uh, to schedule or something like that, you can't actually start that downstream task until the sync job has completed in Fivetran. So you had to implement the sensor to actually do that waiting for it to complete because the operator didn't do that. Um, this is obviously not too complicated. There's not a ton of code here, but it has some downsides. It's a whole extra operator that you have to implement and manage. Um, it's a sensor that's just running all the time. So if that has to wait for a long time, you might incur some resource costs associated with that. So um, just not ideal in the sense of uh, kind of how that operator uh, is designed. So we move over to this Fivetran async DAG. This is going to uh, represent the new Fivetran provider. So the updates here, uh, same DAG, it's doing the same thing. We're still looping through the same connector IDs. And, uh, but you'll notice here, I don't have a sensor. So up here, um, I'm only importing one operator. It's from this async operators, five train operator async. Um, so again, this async operator is going to work in the same way that the other operator worked in that uh, it's the same parameters that you pass in. Uh, the code looks the same. Um, so super easy to update your DAGs. Um, if you want to switch over to this, uh, there's full parity there. But with this new async operator, it's actually going to do the waiting within the task that it runs for that job to complete. So you no longer have to implement a sensor downstream of it to know when that sync job is finished. Um, and it's an asynchronous operator, which means that while it's running, it's going to defer. So it's going to release its worker slot in Airflow, which means both you have more scalability in your Airflow instance, that slot is available for other tasks. Um, it also means that you're going to save resource costs. So there's um, the mechanism within Airflow to manage those deferred tasks is much more efficient than just having a task sitting there waiting. So huge benefit there, especially if you have jobs kind of with bigger data. Again, making the update from the original one to this new one uh, might be as simple as just replacing the operator name both here and uh, in your import. Or sometimes folks just uh, import as you know, the old name so that all you have to change is the import there. Um, so super straightforward. Uh, if you were implementing sensors, you can get rid of them. Um, and then, so if I hop back to my browser here, just to give you a sense of kind of what this DAG looked like, um, here's our extract DAG. Uh, again, we have a task group here. Um, it's doing a whole bunch of extracts. Uh, those might change depending on when this is run. Um, Again, the graph view, we only have the extract task that's going to be running this async operator, so that will defer while it's running if it takes a while before we have our downstream task. The other thing that I mentioned um, that's new in this new operator is an open lineage integration. So this means that there's an extractor built for this asynchronous operator. So uh, if you have your Airflow instance connected up to some sort of lineage front end, I'm going to show it on Astro. Um, but there are others available as well. You're going to also get lineage from this. So that's really useful since that I'm going to hop over to the lineage graph here. Like I mentioned, uh, five train jobs are often not run in isolation within Airflow. It's very often combined with other tools that may be a DBT, it might be something else. Um, but it's super helpful to be able to break that up into different DAGs, depending on who's managing them. And then the lineage integration is going to give you an overview into how that all fits together. So we just looked at that extract DAG. Obviously, that only had you know, a couple of parallel tasks. That's what this box in the middle here is representing. So in this particular run, there were three different extracts that ran, um, three data sets that were created. But I can also see in this graph both where that data was coming from originally. Um, so these are different data sets that I can see here. Um, and then if I look downstream, we can see that 
uh, there's a whole bunch of different tasks um, that are in part of a separate DAG uh, downstream that are being run based on this data. So in this particular case, again, it's a DBT integration, um, but this lineage is just gonna allow me to see um, the full picture of where that data is going and how that's flowing through. So um, lineage is obviously great for observability, um, for you know all sorts of different uh, monitoring and you know working across teams and and things like that so if you are uh leveraging that lineage integration this this can be super helpful um, cool so with that promise to keep this super short um again just wanted to highlight those two features there will be more to come uh with this new provider but with that for this session we will go ahead and open it up to any questions Unless Baraj has already answered all the questions. <laughs> I have not answered, I answered some of the questions. I don't know if I've gotten to all of them. I'll give her a minute or two to ask. Does lineage show five train as black box or is it pull graph from inside? So that's a great question, Emmanuel. Right now, it's just gonna show the source of the pull. That's where we've started with this. Um, we'll obviously want to make it uh, so we have more features to that lineage integration, but for right now it's just showing where that data came from. We will note that you can also, as you see in this picture, see um, for the data sets that are created from that uh, five train job, you can see things like the schema, which is what's shown here in the bottom. So um, there's some extra useful information around that, but yeah, job specifically. Um, let's see here. Emil. Thanks for the compliment, Emil. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Clarice, Clarice is asking, what's the benefit of using the async five-parent connection as opposed to scheduling jobs within the five-parent itself? You know, the async five-parent connection was really focused on users uh, who are orchestrating their jobs with Airflow because they want one view of everything that happens before and after five-parent. Um, if you're just scheduling the five parent job within Airflow, oh, sorry, if you're just scheduling the five parent sync within five parent itself, you know, the asynchronous Airflow integration isn't going to do you much good. Uh, it's really focused on folks already trying, already using Airflow and five parent together. I saw a raised hand from someone, but then it went away. Uh, but if you have a question, please just drop it in the chat. Alrighty, one last call for questions. Um, I am gonna drop a link to the repo that can create a new operator. Um, uh, give me one second here, just so you all can go a bit after I lost all my windows. Oh. There we go. We'll drop a link to this right here. Um, if how to handle a success of five trends, it says exception. Um, I think you'd have to jump into your five trend logs to see see what that's like um, if you're getting an error there. I will add though, just on that question, kind of managing the task state that the new operator gives you a lot more functionality there because it's actually waiting for the job to finish as opposed to just sending the request for the job. So if something happens in the middle, you'll at least have that task state propagated into Airflow and you can you know, manage that from the Airflow side in whatever way you need to. So if you want downstream tasks to run or not run or anything like that, you have a lot more options with the new version there. Um, obviously how, how to handle those exceptions will vary a lot depending on what happened. Great call, great call. Um... Alrighty, thank you everyone for joining. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us a note, uh, try out the new provider. And if you find things that you want, please reach out to us as well, or just open an, an issue on that repo. Um, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for your time. See you Thanks later. everybody.